Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hope everyone's doing well. Today, I'm at Auto Dynamics again, and we're going to be fitting big brakes to the TT. So, if you've seen the last couple of videos, we've got the brakes here. So, these are off of a TTS. I've had them all painted, all kind of like, you know, semi refurbed. We've got Club Sport discs, we've got brake lines, I've got yellow stuff pads in here as well. So, basically, that is kind of the kit you need to upgrade the brakes on the TT. There's also some dust shields as well around here somewhere in that FedEx box. Um, so they're going to be going on. But yeah, I think you'll agree, these discs look pretty insane. And the paint job that my good friend Rob from Dread FX has done on these is absolutely awesome. It's, it's kind of like a candy apple red or candy ruby red he's done them. So he got, he done like a coat of silver underneath and then, you know, kind of layered on this red to give it a kind of deep metallic look. Um, and then he's added the sport logos, the Audi sport logos. He's, what he's actually done is he's um, kind of done a stencil and then airbrushed that, that logo and it's just crazy stuff. But yeah, they look so, so smart. So they're basically going on there. So that should be a dramatic difference. Um, so super excited to get that sorted out. And Michael's here, it's gonna be working on the, uh, on the car this morning. He's even had an haircut, especially for YouTube. <laughs> So Michael, do you have to, when you bleed them, do you have to, when you bleed the rears, do you have to disable the parking brake and stuff? It's good to disable. Yeah. Some, some of them cars, some models, we have to check it. And you need to plug the diagnostic computer and bleed with the yeah. diagnostic computer. That's but what I've we heard. We'll see later. Yeah, we'll see, it, see how it goes. See those discs I've got are like yours. See what I'm trying to do? So I've got the wrong discs? No, <laughs> right one. I just checking because sometimes it's sided. Ah. Uh, that vent can be different, but they're both the same. This disc is not sided. Because sometimes you can fit disc on the wrong side. Yeah, I think they both had the same part number, but yeah. Yeah. But some Audis, when you upgrade, they come sided the discs. Yeah. Right. You can't fit left the disc on the right side because it's not going to pull down properly. Right. So it's to do with the vents, basically, isn't it? Like, yeah. So if if it's the other way around, then obviously the airflow is going to be different. Yes, um, So those dust shields are okay. Great for perfect. Do you think dust shields are the dust shields necessary? Or is yeah. it worth having? They're holding, keeping heat off from other parts behind, mm. and bringing nice flow of air for cooling down. Yeah, yeah. And doesn't come old dirt on the other side. Got ya. Yeah, because it, it's tempting, because obviously that's an extra cost to do that. So it's tempting to go, oh, you don't need the dust shields, but yeah, it's better to do it. Yeah. That's what I thought, so it's good. Yeah, so Michael said it's important that it's nice and clean on the other side of there, because otherwise, yeah, you won't, it won't seat down properly and you might get vibration, but that, that just looks insane, so much bigger. Right, so we've got the calipers here. Michael's just held it up. Oh, it looks so good. But mainly, does it actually fit? Yeah, fitting nicely. That's good. So you're gonna put the pads in, well, compress that back? Yeah, we need to compress the piston back and put parts, then we can fit brake parts with caliper, replace new hell brake holes. Yeah. Got all those. And we go to the other side. Yeah, cool. So you've got this tool for, um, it's always a tool. <laughs> Sometimes it's him that's the tool. You can't hear me. It makes the job a lot easier, doesn't it? Yeah. Sometimes it's very hard to push four pistons in once. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, I, I, I did actually try it. I can I couldn't do it by hand. Obviously, I think a lot of the fluid, oh, you can see the fluid coming out now. That is, that just destroys paintwork, that fluid, doesn't it? Yeah. You can see some of the red was coming off before when it was just in the car. Look at that, there's quite a lot still in there. So we were just having a chat about our love for petrol and talking about electric and, you know, how, you know, it does have its place, like EVs have got their place, but when it comes to, you know, sort of what you can get bang for buck, you just can't beat petrol, really. <laughs> he was trying to do something stupid to put me off. 
and now he's gone all shy. I'm <laughs> also saying, you know, like Tesla's obviously are great and everybody's kind of, you know, they're like, oh, you know, Tesla's performance is amazing. And, you know, they have got some crazy brake horsepower now on their um, Tesla Model S Plaid edition, that sort of stuff. But these are really heavy cars. I've said this before. It's really heavy. And, you know, we're getting away from a kind of vehicle that's engineered well and the weight balance is really good. And I've seen quite a lot of stuff actually online where maybe they put like a, you know, like a Tesla against like a, something really well designed, well engineered and well balanced, like, you know, like, a, like an M3 or M4, something like that. Um, and the handling, how those cars actually handle because of the weight distribution is absolutely bang on versus a Tesla. Like a Tesla will kind of perform similar around the track, maybe even beat, you know, something like, you know, an M3 around the track. But it's done by computers, so the, the handling is actually controlled by, um, by, by software. Some people say, you know, it can make it feel a bit kind of synthetic. I just think it's really interesting how things are going. You know, everything's turning into a big electric SUV. And yeah, this sort of, this sort of thing's lost. Like modern cars, we were talking about our passion for like, you know, tweaking things and how it makes you feel. You know, when you do a little mod to a car, it kind of makes you feel a bit better. I mean, and this is a whole movement of people. I don't know, I don't know, I'm just ranting now. But it's just, you know, a different, a completely different mindset. I think we're early days with electric, basically, and, you know, there will be opportunities for doing mods. You've seen me do the Twizy and do all the mods to that and increase the performance and everything else. Um, but the trouble is the more complicated cars get with more software that you can't change, it just ends up a bit like a smartphone on wheels. Darren's here from It's A Wrap. He hasn't just turned up, he's just moving his car. We've already met, but... Yeah, this is Darren from uh, It's A Wrap. Look at his amazing TT. This has been a bit of an inspiration for a lot of people, I think, this car. Um, and it's been, what, about two years in the... Two years in the making. Two years in the making. Go follow Darren, because he's got a, got a channel and everything else. I'll leave the links and stuff in the description. Um, and he's got a really good Instagram, actually, showing a lot. But if you need to know anything about doing anything um, mods-wise to the TT, Not he's your man. <laughs> Not engine mods. Just body mods. <laughs> it, it looks stunning though, doesn't it? It looks really, really nice. How's it going? Yeah, nearly done. Any issues or anything? So far, everything fits nicely. Everything fits fine. So you had to modify. Yeah, we replaced new hell brake brake hoses, and we have to modify that clip. Yeah. To make more bendy, to make sure it's nice and tight. Ah, and okay. Place. So where it clamps on there, oh, because it's a different, it's a different clip. Yeah. Because it's a TT, it'll be a, that's a standard TT clip. So the yeah. TTS one's probably different, is it? Uh, no, it's same. Yeah. It's same, just pipe is not standard. Right. And uh, that grow where it's going clip more bigger. Right. Yeah. Okay. They look crazy oh, though, don't they? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so smart. So these clips are really important. Um, these are the little clips that come with the, the hoses to stop it moving, because obviously it's set in position. And then if you slide this, basically that hose slides around without those clips. So it's really important to get that right. Oh, and they just sort of clamp together, do they? Yes. Just click, then, to, click then together. Hold. Yeah, make sure it's free everywhere. No tensioner. Got you. So we're bleeding the brakes now, yeah? Yeah, we bleed it with vacuum to make sure to remove all the bubbles out. Now we're bleeding by pressing the brake pedal to yeah. make sure all bubbles come out. Get rid of the bubbles? Yeah. You have to do this on the back as well, do you? Uh, no, it's not necessary when we didn't open. And also we block the pipes to make sure it's not dripping all right. the fluid out. So it should be pressurised? From the, from the back, so you wouldn't need to do the battle. That's, that's handy. Yeah, we can do that. Right, so moment of truth. Is it gonna fit with that wheel? Yeah, it looks all right. Oh, that looks insane. I don't know whether that would fit without the spacer though. That is quite close to that. I don't think so, That looks absolutely badass though. Yeah, so without the spacer, I probably wouldn't fit. There's quite, not much space there. See that mate, Darren's off. Love this TT though, look at that. 
So there is a bedding process for these brakes. I'm just looking at, so it's really important to do this. Um, so what are we saying here? This. So you've got to drive carefully for the first 50 miles, assessing the change brake performance to allow any distance. Okay, and then early use. Right, noise won't continue. There's, a, there's one we have to drop to, from 60 to 20, isn't it? After approximately 200 miles of urban use, using the brakes severely only in emergency, commence the final bedding of the pads by decelerating from 60 to 20, at least five times on a quiet, safe road. Be cautious of vehicles around behind you and undertaking this final bedding. So really important to do that, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> right, so just drop down off the ramp. Look at that, it looks so good. So impressed by that. So we'll take it for a quick run around the block, I think, and just test, just test it, see what it's like, which I think Steve's gonna do. Just moving the car, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So let's see. Yeah, it does. It does feel different. Definitely feels different. Definitely a lot more sharper on the. Uh, but not not crazy. Yeah, it's not like ridiculous. I thought it might be. You know, just tapping the brakes would be crazy. It actually feels nice. Right, well, I need to concentrate parking. So I'm back. How good do they look? Just look so good, don't they? So I drove back really, really careful just to make sure you know nothing's wrong or anything else but i tell you what i did have one little little moment where i had to brake pretty sharply i didn't really want to because obviously you're supposed to not um you know you're supposed to bed these in gently but something kind of like pulled out and i had to and it flipping <laughs> i nearly hit the windscreen it's um yeah it's crazy really gonna be insane once they bed in properly so the idea now is to just run these for a few hundred miles um very lightly not hit them hard at all um and then we can do a proper bedding process which involves going from 60 mile an hour to nothing a few times it's in the document i'll do exactly what it says in there because i don't want to wreck these pads and um, and discs but yeah what a wicked day it's always cool to go and see the boys at auto dynamics um, they get stuff done so quick and just yeah this is just this is just brilliant this is going to transform this car so excited to do this it's a shame about the weather i wanted to get some nice pictures of the car look it's even raining now so i'll end this one now and i'll catch you next time